This is the Retrogen. I wanted to do a review of it. I have a while. I've had it for a while. Um, I've been using it with the Retro Duo Portable. It allows you to plug in your SNES carts and use adapters like the Retrogen to play Genesis games, as well as uh, another adapter, the adapter, the Retro Port, which is crazy uh, to play NES games. But right now we're talking about this. Um, this will allow you to plug uh, basically this adapter into, say, the RetroDuo Portable or an SNES or a clone console and basically play, kind of play uh, Genesis games on those uh, SNES kind of clone hardware thingies or the original console. Uh, the other thing is this is a system on a chip, so it basically is the console and just requires uh, like a Super Nintendo or whatever for power and input. Um, so you need it for, you can only use Super Nintendo controllers with it because it requires the Super Nintendo <laughs> controllers basically to be plugged in or to have something like this, which basically has a Super Nintendo controller built in, kind of. So, uh, if you're going to use this with a Super Nintendo, though, and some other clone consoles, uh, the, er, the AV out does not work uh, from the console. You have to plug in a separate AV out into, the, into this. With the Retro Duo Portable, it has a video pass-through that allows the uh, image to show up on the screen. Uh, also, I believe the Retro Duo has that as well. Um, so, I want to talk about something that I don't see many people talking about, and that is the lack of a mode button. So there's no mode, the mode button hasn't been mapped to uh, the controller when you play. So if you use a Super Nintendo controller and you try playing a, a Genesis game that requires the mode button, you're shit out of luck because you, it's just basically shit. Like, can't play Gold Max 2. Uh, it requires you to use the mode button to change the, um, the controller to act like a three button controller but because you can't do that because the, the mode button isn't mapped you just can't play Golden Axe 2 um, so then there are, mode, there are games that require the mode button for um, certain things during the gameplay so you can't play those um, but there were some games that do seem to require the mode button to switch the controller layout that did work that I was surprised because they don't work on the original hardware that way. Um, I believe Eternal Champions is like that, but um, I was able to play it and it acted like a three button controller. So I don't know what's going on there, but when it comes to Golden Axe, you can't change the button layout and you just simply can't play the game. Um, and like I said, there's some games that require the mode button to do that uh, to uh, for gameplay. Uh, one other game that apparently s requires the mode button. I don't know. I have to try this out. Uh, well, I I tried it out on on this, but I have to, I want to try it on the original hardware to see what happens. But Pit Fighter apparently requires the mode button for that, but it worked fine. So some games seem to work fine, even though they apparently require the mode button. So I don't know about that, but yeah, Golden Axe 2 is a no-go. Uh, of course, this thing is not going to play Virtua Racing um, because of its extra hardware inside of the cartridge and whatever else. Um, so no Virtua Racing on the go. For me, that's not really big, even though I actually really like Virtua Racing, it's not the best version. And it, on that little tiny screen, I already have trouble seeing what's going on in the Genesis version. So it's not the end of the world if I can't play it specifically on the retro gen um, on the go. However, if you want, maybe you wanted to play it on the Super Nintendo, but that's not going to work. And that's the case with a lot of a lot of uh, clone hardware. Is that simply there's certain compatibility issues like Virtua Racing or with Virtua Racing. Um, so, but as a whole, the, the compatibility is quite good, actually. Just about every game that I plug in seems to work. I'm trying to think of any other games. I thought I came across another game in my collection that was a little, 
on that wasn't working. I thought I did. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently I can't find it. Right. Yep. Except for Golden Axe 2, it seems like everything I have out here, because that's everything I've tested so far, is everything I have out on the table. I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> um, things you can also do is if you have like a... Um, it gets a little comical looking, especially when you have this stuff stacked. Let me just throw a pit fighter on top of it. And this is one of the shorter cards, so... So, you know, once you pop that on top of this, I mean, if in, a, in a regular console or if you have it plugged up to your TV, it's all right, but, you know, obviously you're not going to want to sit on the bus with something like this. You know, you probably just want to go with your phone and some emulators or whatever. But, you know, if you want to sit on the toilet, take a crap, or uh, go to a, you know, if you're going out and you want to go to a, um, you know, a hotel, whatever. But that's not really about this, the Retro Duo Portable. This is specifically about this. So let's keep, I'm going to try to keep it on that. Um, so you can put a Master System adapter on here. They make uh, more slim versions of it that are like cartridges. Uh, I forget the name of it. I have one that's kind of a generic one. I need to get a, a better one. But uh, the Powerbase Mini. You can get the Powerbase Mini, put it on top of here, and then play... Master System games, but then you have like a stack of cartridges. So again, the portable stuff, but you have this, and you have the Powerbase Mini, and on top of that, you also have a Master System game. Mine's actually taller. The one I have, the generic thing, is taller, so it's even worse. But I have had good luck with that one game I own, which uses FM sound. Does not work. It, it uh, right. It's the sound is muted. I'm assuming it's because the FM sound. Compatibility is probably causing an issue, but that's that. So yes, it will do Master System games. Um, it does have a region switch here, so you can in fact change the region of the cartridge, so you can play cartridges from different regions. Um, I I actually did switch. So I put Sonic the Hedgehog on top here, I switched it to PAL, and it did give me that slow uh, version of Sonic, so if you actually remember it that way, you can, you know, if you're from that region and you prefer that slowness, uh, you can switch it to PAL even if you have a NTSC cart and it will actually play all slow and stuff. <laughs> so, that is there. Um, you can't play a Bare Knuckle, I tried uh, uh, Bare Knuckle 2. I tried, I put Streets of Rage 2 on top of it and switched it and it did not bring up bare knuckle, it just brought up, brought up a, uh, it brought up a screen telling me, no, you cannot play this, screw off, nice try, asshole, so, you know, that was basically it, I'm assuming that's what would happen on the original hardware. So, there's of course that, I'm trying to think of anything to, else to cover, I mean, uh, I'm just going to show some of the games that I did test. Not a hell of a lot. I have a lot more, but all my games are really cleaned out. Like, the pins have been, like, polished with brass polish, alcohol, you know, and then buffed with a dry Q-tip to make sure that they shine so much that you can see yourself in them. So, just to make sure that none of the, if there's a compatibility issue, it's either the cartridge is crap and needs to be replaced, which I had happened twice. Um, I, I took it apart and the whole thing was like all corroded and shitty. And then the other option is the fact that it just simply doesn't work. And um, so I used Pit Fighter and that worked. Colonel Champions worked, of course. Street Fighter 2 worked. Controls a little funny with the Super Nintendo controller, but that's uh, that's not a that's a Super Nintendo game. I don't need that. Road Rash one worked. Haven't tried the second one. I do have it. No, that's a Super Nintendo game. Streets of Rage two. I mentioned that before. It did work. Saw the Hedgehog. I saw somebody have problems with it, and they got it to work. But it, it just worked. Um, Golden Axe. I 
use that. And the six pack, by the way, I also use that. I don't have it out here, but just I did get the six pack running. And that seems like that. And like I said, the, the one that I couldn't get to work was Golden Axe 2. So that's important to you. Sorry, it doesn't work. There's no workaround. It just simply doesn't work. Um, I'm trying to think of any other games I've played. Oh, Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, yeah, Mortal Kombat 1. There should be some other stuff. Well, it's just basically almost everything I play works, including Master System games. And I don't remember if I mentioned this, but the, um, the signal you get from a Genesis game is basically the AV signal. It's like it doesn't look... It's not like a digital signal that's all sharp and stuff. It looks like it's being sent through AV cables to a television. Um, so it's got that little bit of a wavy look and a bit of a blurriness to it. So it doesn't look as good as the rest of the games. But that's because it's basically sending that AV signal to the, uh, to the screen. And basically that's what you're getting. So you get that kind of little bit of a dot crawl issue and stuff like that. So that's... That's my review of this. Uh, I'm wondering if I recommend this. If you have a Super Nintendo and you're you're basically trying to save space or something, it'd be it's definitely good to save space with. Sega Genesis is fairly cheap. I mean, if you want to play everything and you want to play it on the original hardware, get a Sega Genesis. Um, it's you're gonna get a better you know you get, it's gonna be a lot better uh you'll have the compatibility um you'll be able to play on the original controllers so you don't have any control issues um you know just don't i don't think you should get the uh, model 3 sega genesis that one i think he actually has compatibility issues i don't think it plays virtual racing unless you modify it uh the only thing this does though that that uh, the original genesis doesn't do is like it has the the region switch thing you don't want to think about that, but yeah. So this is you know, and you could, if you do get this, you can put it in like a retro duo portable and take your games on the go. Um, and uh, that thing lasts quite a bit long, so yeah. However, if you're just looking to play on the TV, and you don't care about the little space saving thing, get a Genesis. Um, it's a hell of a lot better idea. Than this this is better for like you know space saving and keeping things neat um, and if you don't care about the games that aren't compatible at least you can start collecting stuff that uh, is compatible with that and uh, yeah so I can recommend it for someone who mostly especially for someone who has this who have this and you're a big fan of the Sega Genesis like I am, you can take your cartridges, if that means something to you, <laughs> you can take your cartridges with you instead of just having you know, like your phone with some ROMs on it or a hack console or something. Um, this is, a, to me, this is just like the essential part of this. Um, I had the Sega Nomad, the batteries were terrible. Um, it was a lot bigger than this. This is kind of big, but it's a lot bigger. So for this, I can recommend in certain situations, um, but not every single one. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a mixed bag. They should. I wish there were upgrades. Like this is the one time I wish they would uh, they would leave it open for updates, like internet updates or something. Because in this situation, it could have fixed the issue with the mode button, and really that would help a lot. Um, uh, it's a little rough because it has that AV out thing, so if you have a Super Nintendo, you need more cables. But, as far as recommending it, yeah, um, that's basically my recommendation. Uh, if you want to save space, and you want to play uh, the original cartridges, get this, and uh, you have your Super Nintendo, and you're just popping in and play the games, as long as they're compatible. Which most games seem to be. So, I have to give this a... Huh. So that's a, a hard. If I was going to give it a rating, probably a 
3.8 out of 5. It's just like hard to give it like a 4 when it has compatibility issues and the mode button isn't even mapped. So, yeah, that, that's my review for the Retro Gen. I really like it, but that's for my, my scenario there. And I really wish they mapped the mode button. Come on, we have a select button here. There's a select button. The Super Nintendo has a select button. We could have mapped the mode to the select button, but you didn't. That's a little rough. That could have fixed a lot of compatibility issues, but there you go. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.